What's up, everybody? That was, we, were just, we were just catching up right now on History for Fools. And, and I think, I don't know what episode this is, but this is like we're continuing talking about, you know, just keeping on the subject of gangs, um, the, the history of gangs, right. or the, the history of, of what I think I know about gangs. Thank you, everybody, who's been listening and who have been commenting on the gangs. Um, later on, when we're done, <clears throat> we're gonna have a wrap up again, and we'll get back. We'll get your comments, and thank you for um, comment for commenting that Butch is not breathing no more. Ah, he's actually choking now. Yes, yes. Now I just I hold my breath until the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Okay, when I was in the fucking seventh grade, Sean Farmer broke my nose. And it fucked up. How old were you? I was 13 years old. How did that? Was that like? And he I, was like way bigger than me. I've been punching the nose, and um, never been broken that I know of. Yeah, no, I was coming out, so I thought I, I just got know the, that the pain right here. I thought I got the best of him, and I got in a fight with him, and I punched him, and then the the teachers broke it up, and I was like, hell yeah, I won that fight. You describe the <laughs> the pain because I. I'm trying to. Just, oh yes. Because I when uh, when I got hit in the face before I got hit with a glove, I got hit with so, a baseball glove. I just want to know that the right here, man. As soon as you get hit right here, yeah. If they don't break it, it just sends instant tears I'm, to I'm your gonna eyes. I'm going to tell you how painful this was. This is probably one of the wor- most painful things I've ever felt in my life. I'm coming out of my out of my locker room. I have my backpack in one hand, my gym clothes in the other, and he sucker punches me. Bam. Hits me as hard as he can, right in the middle of the face. And my nose, when I went to now, the, so This part right here, broken bro, right here. This, this was pushed over into my eye. I couldn't even see. Like, I could see the shadow of my nose going over my eye. And so we... we 500 fights. So, so we, 500 fights. This is where it started, bro. This is probably, like, the first fight for me. And so, like, I go to the hospital. Oh, my God. Poor guy. Poor um, kid. I bleed. I bled everywhere. The blood stayed there for years. How much I bled. Um, and then this was the worst part for my mom. And I hope you, piece of shit, are listening to this because my mom had to suffer through this, bro. Her, his mom was a roofer, so I, you're up there. I had. If, so, yeah. so I. They took me to the hospital. They had to lay me down on the gurney. They had to hold my head down, hold my arms down. They took with like a huge butter knife, but like thicker. You had hair back then, right? I mean, I, yeah. Every time you tell these stories, I'm imagining this bald Little dude bald getting kid. beat up. No, right? I had hair like yours. I had hair that went down yeah. to my shoulders. It was long. And um, they put the butter knife up one side, and then the nurse's assistant holds my head, and the fucking uh, doctor just slowly pulls until she hears my face pop back into place. And uh, the pain, I remember seeing White for like, when he punched me, I remember that was so painful. I remember seeing White and like not feeling anything and then like coming to and just blood, pools of blood in my face everywhere. And then there was sheer pain. And then what was cool though is they gave me medical cocaine to numb when they were going to do the procedure. And when she did it though, fuck the cocaine, bro, because... Again, pure white. Snap! And it just went to white. And I could hear my mom almost... Pa- my mom, like, buckled against the wall. And, like, because I, like... Because they were holding my arms down. And I just, like, gripped the bed. And my feet went out. And, like, it was instant pain. And then it went away. And then um, I, my face was purple and black for, like, a week. Yeah. Damn, bro. But that fool's a loser. Did he go to jail for that? Nah, bro. He, weak. He had an abusive father, all kinds of shit, dude. But he wouldn't. You didn't press charges. My mom would have pressed charges. My mom charges. wanted to, but then I think my dad talked her out of it, or the school. You know, we're no fucking rats, bro. We're no fucking rats, dude. And I never had a chance to come back at that fool, but I'm pretty sure now, um, you know, after what I've been through in my life, bro, I would have probably knocked that fool out at some point. So he's lucky he didn't. He didn't run up on me, but. I'm doing fucking history for foos podcast right now, and I don't know what he's up to, but uh, yeah, you learn your lessons. Bro. Um, when learn, you to get, put, learn to put your hands up as soon as someone approaches people you. People that do cocaine, 
could fuck up the nose the way you did over the years for doing cocaine, huh? Just slowly, huh? <laughs> yeah, that'll do it slowly. That guy did it instantly. And so that's why I breathe heavy. So, I have a deviated septum. Like, it's natural. Like, right now when I'm talking, it's just natural that my nose just closes up. And I don't breathe through my nose like naturally. I have to like consciously. But that's been a good exercise here because so you gotta walk around with a snorkel. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, dude. You, I don't know. If you, I don't know because I've been staying at uh, at your place. I don't know if you guys can hear me through the walls snoring, but it's pretty. It's pretty gnarly. I don't hear anything, bro. I just thought the trash man came in at two in the morning. <laughs> that was me. I was just emptying your waste baskets. Yeah, man. They, the trash man, the trash man. I used to. I remember when I was, as a kid. Yeah. Tr the trash man, like in the neighborhood, was loud. Yeah. Bro. That back in the days, bro, when like history of history of fools, right here, when um the fireman used to be four, three dudes. It was a fire. It was a driver. Yeah. And two guys in the back, dumping trash and then hanging out like in the back like firemen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And those dudes. Always have big ass arms. Do you think they were uh, trash, trash? Uh, I don't know what you call it, trash collector, trash collector gangs. Yeah, bro, it's called a mob, or in New York, they collect all the sanitation. Mm. I work in sanitation. What up, man? History for fools, man. You ever watch Gangs of New York? Fuck yeah, bro. I love that it's movie. It's my favorite bro. movie. Fuck it. If you were part of that, if you were in that gang, would you be a dead rabbit? Would you be a what? what or, or would you be one of the Americans, bro? They're being a gang it. called the Maricones. Oh yeah, bro. Uh, I saw that gang in the beginning, bro. Those were those, those prostitutes that look like dudes, the she stabbing dudes. The Sheehees is what he called the Sheehees and the and you know the what's it called. So can so I? We're talking about gangs in New York. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I love this movie and how true is it? Very true, huh? Very okay, dude. The names will change. Great. This is this is the whole, bro. I'm sorry. There's a lot Did of research. Did you bring your big club? Dude, you came to me at the first, like, I think it's the last episode. And you're like, I want to know about this. And I'm like, I didn't do that research. This is the research that I did. This I is know, man. Like, this for. fool showed up when we were dressed to do history for fools. <laughs> the first one we talked about, I brought my Pendleton. Yeah. This fool was wearing a top hat. <laughs> he, he, had a, he had one of those leather clubs. I thought you said dress like a gay. This fool had a he had, he had a banner <laughs> on his fucking ne on his shoulder that said Tenemy Hall. <laughs> I want your vote. Okay, so uh, he was trying to convince Irish people to fight, fight go fight the South. <laughs> <laughs> so the book was written. It was Bob the Butcher. Uh, Gangs of New York was written. Um, it was a book first, right? It was a book first, but it was a not. <laughs> this is what I didn't know, and I wish that I had had time to read it. Um, by uh, is by it's by a guy named Herbert Asbury. It's called Gangs of New Herbert York. Herbert Asbury. And, and so what, what Scorsese did, and this is like, man, you know, some movies, you go, that shit didn't even really happen. Hey, That's man. not even really how it went down. Hey, Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese would have written that film during those time. Right. There would have been a couple of natives looking for him, huh? Um. Oh, bro, they, that fool would be greenlit, dude, because it was so accurate. So we're talking about Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York, man. The Butcher. Bill the Butcher. Okay, so, I, I'm so I've been reading this so much. What was his name in the movie? Because now I know what his real name is, but it's not the same name. It was... Um, the Butcher, Bill... Bill the Butcher. Bill Cutting. Bill, Bill Cutting. Cutting, Bill Cutting. Okay, so that wasn't his real name, but let's start with... Let's go way back, okay? So there was no gangs in America before Gangs of New York. There might have been tribes, there might have been groups, but there was nobody officially calling themselves gangs. There was no nothing. <laughs> what started to happen is the potato famine um, took over Ireland. So that's when you start to see the first wave of Irish um, immigrants come over. And... And at the same time, the United States needs workers. It needs people. It's a capitalistic fucking industry. Just they need soldiers too. It needs soldiers to fight the civil war. So they're pulling people out. They're they come out to America. There's no potato famine here. You get to eat. At the same time, now we're gonna start relating. Now you're gonna start seeing shit that's happening now. There's a group of men that are like, hey, we 
these fucking immigrants are taking our jobs. These natives. These, these, these natives. There's a line in a, there's a line in a movie that uh, Bill Cuddy says. He goes, these heathens. Right. They, they're, they're doing the job that a black dude used to get paid seven for. Right. And a white man would do for 25. And he, these pigs are doing it for five. So they were saying pretty much that the, the, the new Irish people were coming in and doing jobs that were paid less that were they were paying black I people could, in the spend, north i could spend hours telling you how and I, when how i was in, formed but when I'm, i was in bethesda yeah bethesda maryland, maryland i spoke to a a, a woman there as a drunk irish woman and she took and she was pointing at the theater that i was performing at and then she said that that there used to be a sign there that says no pigs and no irish allowed wow no shit so that's the thing, man. And and these people were coming over. Um, and, and so this is kind of the early, early, early makings of gangs. Now, I could tell you how every gang started, but that would take all episodes. So let's just go ahead and say that every gang is started the same way, out of oppression, out of not having money, out of a group of people that have... Out of having too many people in one place, right, too. Right, and, and, and out, of, out of being poor, having, having density, and then... Out of being this group of people, whether it be your your race, your um, what you do for a living, all that stuff is what 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 starts to shape these gangs. You have it's this- true, man. Because the, the I, I never knew that, but the when watching that book, I didn't know that firemen were actually a gang before. Right, and and so firemen. Well, people- first off, you have you have the natives. And they are very much like, we don't want these Irish people here. And they start beating at them, throwing rocks. And they got the Bowery so, Boys. So what you see in Gangs of New York. about the Bowery Boys. You have the Bowery Boys. Hold on, though. So what you see in the Gangs of New York is a conglomeration of actually what's happening. So when they're throwing stones at the Irish people, that's actually in the beginning what started to happen. But the Bowery Boys started to form. And the Dead Rabbits started to form. And it was not even ethnicities. It was like... The Bowie Boys were a makeup of Jewish people, Italian people, Irish people, and and but they were immigrants, and so they were like, "Fuck that! This is our block. We're gonna take it over here." And um, you know, the uh, the natives was actually a group of butchers. That's why Bill the Butcher was so his name was so prominent. Pretty much Freemasons, because they they are they all they all had skills. Well, yes, exactly, and that's how the Masons started yeah. and stuff like that. But so, and now you have the Dead Rabbits. Okay, so this is what I plus been- the Dead Rabbits and the new immigrants. You gotta remember this very important. Everybody that's here already, it's Protestant. Right. They're Protestant. And the people that are coming in, yes. they're Catholic. And the Protestants know that they have allegiance to the Pope. Right. And they show allegiance yeah, to the Pope. Yeah, a lot Pope. of this has to do so with a lot the of the religion. natives, a lot of natives' propaganda was, how could, they, how could these people serve two people? They got to pick one. Right. Really? They got to pick one? So you have this group of guys from Ireland that are going like, fuck no. So the word dead rabbit, according to um, the research that I did um, through a couple books, comes from a Gaelic phrase, dead rabid, which means husky man who could work or something in that way. And so a lot of the guys that were coming back, coming here from Ireland were like huge husky dudes that were working on the docks or joining the military. And so they would go to, oh, they're the dead rabbits over there. And it slowly formed into dead rabbits. And then once the kind of like the, the socialization and culturalization dimmed down a little, they, they took the name and turned it into dead rabbits. And then they used red da- dead rabbit pelts as their like symbol. And then their rabbits as a symbol on their on their thing. So that's a, that's a theory. No one really actually knows where that name came from. But so you start to see these factions show up, like Dead Rabbits, Bowery Boys, uh, the the Thirty Thieves, and some of them have different jobs. There's one job, and going back to the firefighters, you said you didn't know that they had a firefighter gang, right? Yeah. So like in the movie, that's a true thing. They would fight over who who got to to put the fire out, but uh, do you know what the whole purpose was for them to do that for? Yeah, because um, I I read on that on that book um the book that I was reading about the the history of the the the, the five points. Yes, they said that um that a lot of people they would they would um not only would they steal 
they were they were they were burn a house and then loot it and loot it. So these people said, the people who live in that neighborhood started getting together and started starting their own fire department to protect their own fires. So, so they won't get looted from right, it. and they don't get looted. But the other they were like they were like fire. There was like city fire and municipal fire. Right. Well, there was the different gangs. And then the other thing was is that the money didn't go to pay. They had jobs. All those guys had day jobs. <clears throat> um, and then that money in their day jobs went to their li- livelihood. The money that they looted and, and, and they got from looting all went to partying. They just wanted to fucking drink beer, get fucked up, and party. So, you had, yeah, you had all these factions. The same thing with police. There were police gangs. So you had the municipal police and you had the metropolitan police and you had two different politicians that controlled each one and they would fight with each other and eventually metropolitan police took over. But again, everything was a gang back then in New York. And if you ever go to New York City, um, there's a there's there, it's still like that. They have like they have the, the New York Police Department. They got the New York um, MTA department. Right. They got the municipal. They got the bay. They got police for the fucking river, and they got pol- they got the fucking police for the um, for um, the sound and shit. Um. The, yeah. They have the, the port. They have the, the port port authority. Port authority. Um. Who dealt a lot with like nine eleven and shit. And then like the that. airport police. But all those guys came from gangs, and they actually still beef in that way. I mean, they still go. They don't share information. This is my fucking jurisdiction, and they only share information if they have to subpoena it and all that other stuff. So I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, because here in California, our police officers yeah. are really the, educated and like yeah. Um, and they they kind of beef too. I don't know how how true this is, but I found out where the word mafia comes from. Okay, and um. If you go back in Italy and Sicily, in Sicily, for example, Sicily was always, there's a, there's a, has always been taken over by different countries when they go in through it to attack Italy. Mm -hmm. So they were taken over by the France at one time. They were taken over by the Moors at one time. Mm -hmm. So um, when the, when the French came in, they went, they went out looking for, for chicks to fucking rape, right? So, um. One dad was yelling out, "Ma, my, my, mafia, mafia!" He was saying, "My daughter, my daughter!" Oh, wow! Because they were taking his daughter. They were taking his daughter. So the Sicilian men in the area, they had to protect their own, their protect their uh, their neighborhoods, right? So they all got together, and whenever they hit, ma- they would hear mafia. They would get together and t- and try to run over there and save the woman and. For they would be taken over by these fucking French dudes that were coming in and taking wow. over this country. And later on, of course, the word changed to um, the mafia. And and I, and, I, and I understand why now a lot of the Italian people that were involved in the mafia never really called it the mafia. Right, right. What was you? Um, what was your favorite part of gangs in New York? Um, my favorite part of gangs in New York is when I would pause it and Google stuff. To find out if it was real, right? And I found out that the character of um, of Carmen um, Cameron Diaz, uh-huh. she was an actual real woman, and she was part of a gang of women uh-huh. that they would go around stealing, and the she her rival was another group of women, and but the other group of women they had a boss and it was a dude. And and he had like his, his main hoe or whatever too. Right. But these chicks would put like they would they would they would cut their nails kind of like the the the, the fucking wifeins monstras, except they they would grow their nails real sharp so they could cut people. And right. there's a woman in that movie that has like cat hands. Okay, so that that's actually a real lady. Yeah, she's a real life character. So it's Cameron Diaz and um, the lady with the with the cat fingers, a real yeah. life lady. That and and that lady owned a bar, and actually you see her working the bar in the movie. Yeah, she had a a, a both a, a jar full of ears. Ears, and so she would. So in the movie, they're paying her with ears, but her thing was she collected ears. Yeah, and she was fierce, man. She was fierce. How's her name? Hellcat, Hellcat Maggie. Maggie. Yes, Hellcat Maggie. So Hellcat Maggie was a real person. Uh, the Cameron Diaz character was a real person. Um, I want to get to Bill the Butcher in a minute, but you know the dude with the cane? 
and like with a, with a club. With a club, that guy represents a dude that becomes Bill Bill the Bill Cutting, who's actually AKA in real life Bill Pool. That's his rival. Um, and they have it out really heavy, which ends up leading to the death of, of Bill Poole. Um, you know, so Bill Bill Cutting, or Bill Poole, is a real fucking character. He's a real guy that hated fucking immigrants and was super anti-immigrant. And um, there was a rival of... You so, so you're talking about the Irish guy that got killed in a movie? What was his name? Um, his name in the movie was... Um, I mean, his name in real life... Um, Morrissey, his his. So could, could you say cause right now you said that guy with a club, but yes. you call him Bill Pullman? No, I'm sorry, Bill Pull is Bill Cutting. I'm, so Bill Cutting killed who? Killed. Um, remember in the movie how he kills uh, the Irish guy? The yeah. Irish guy what was, what was the real name though? His real name is supposed to be um, John Morrissey. So yeah. So he killed John Morrissey. Not in but, real life, though. John Morrissey kills him. Yeah, that's what happened in real life. He killed yeah. him, but he, but he actually was like the first sheriff or something. Well, he was the first representative for the for the the dead rabbits, where he was like, like where he was a a, a force other than just a fighter in the street. He was a professional boxer. He was a championship boxer, and he was a sympathizer for the Irish people, and so he took it upon himself to make Bill Poole his rival. And he walked into the bar one night to challenge Bill to a fight, and he beat the fuck out of two of his two of Bill Pool, Bill uh, two native guys, um, in in this bar, and he took their money and he jacked them, and he's like, "You want a piece of me? Let's fucking do this." And Bill, um, actually, because he went to shoot Bill Pool, that's right, he had a gun. He went to shoot Bill Pool. The gun failed. This is what a fucking kind of dude Bill Pool was, though, bro. Like, that's the one thing is Bill Poole was a piece of shit, but he was also a man-man, manly man, bro. He goes, your gun's not working. I could fucking kill you right now, but I'm going to let you go. And me and you are going to have it out. We're going to have a, a sanctioned fight. Uh, remember the fight on the docks? Yeah. In the movie? Again, weren't, there were fights not allowed to happen in the city. That fight was the biggest fight, and, and it wasn't sanctioned, and they sanctioned amongst themselves. So that fight was a famous fight that was on the docks that happened. And, and Bill uh, beat the crap out of John Morrissey. Like, fucked him up. Like, just beat the shit out of him. Also, Bill Poole was this dude who was a real butcher. He was part of the butcher's union. He came from butchers. He knew how to use a knife, and he was, like, really deadly. That was a true thing. So uh, fast forward now after the fight ends. Fucking John Morrissey's pissed. Fucking takes his gun, goes back to like where they're all celebrating, having a good time. Fucking shoots Bill in the stomach like a bunch of times, and uh, that was the end of Bill Pool. Now, in the end of the movie, do you remember what uh, Bill Cutting says? Bill the Butcher. What he says? He says he looks over at Leonardo DiCaprio. He says, um, "At least I'm dying an American." That is uh, actually what he said when he died. He looked over at his at his. Um, his buddies and he said well boys at least i'm dying an american and then he passes away and what happens afterwards is the largest and still one of the largest funeral processions in new york but now this moves into a whole new era of, of gangs and um how about that when um a, a lot of people like if you watch that um uh, gangs in new york and remember when, when when that big old fucking riot starts yes that riot right there was they fucked up a lot of black people, by the way. Yeah, they, that they was don't a race show riot. that much. It was a race they only riot. show they only show I'm sorry. They only show one black dude getting beaten up, but nah man, these these natives, these firemen, these anti war dudes, they were going inside. They were they were, they ran inside. Cause they were, they, at that time there was um black people, African Americans who were living in the north. This is during the Civil War, who already were who already were prolific, who already were owning businesses. Right. These people already were living a normal life as a black right. person wearing a fucking suit. And there was actually dead rabbits that were black. But when this shit got started, because these guys felt like, why should I go fight this war? You know, why should I go save, fight this war for these black people? You know, because right. you, you know how, how the media spins everything, right? right. So 
they were spinning it. The media was spinning it. You're all here. But they were saying horrible words about black people. Man, they were going inside black orphanage and burning them. Do you know what? why that was happening, though? Part of that was because... So d- I'm just trying to tell what they were burning. Totally. Okay. They were burning because they were racist motherfuckers, bro. Right. That's but- it. And they were racist. They didn't want... People of color, bro. But part of the problem was there was a reason, though, that was that was also happening in that area, because in the five points, there wasn't a lot of um, segregation. Everybody was integrating and the natives couldn't fucking handle it. Because, they still can't handle so, it. So, you know, that building in Gangs of New York, the, the huge building that they're all in and they're partying. That was a real building that was called the a brewery. There was actually underground pits. And there's several news reports during the media where it was like black, whites, laying together, having sex, doing things, not bathing, robbing, thieving. And the fucking natives were like, these black people are like, can't be in our fucking midst. Like, and so they were trying to all that was and that was the beginning of the divide and conquer. That was the beginning of like, you fucking Irish dogs are dogs, but you're not as bad as these these black people right here. And so that was like the whole trying to just like and and if you go down south now, you have a poor community of blacks and a poor community of whites, but they don't get along because it was like we're not you're not like them, you're like us. You're not rich like us, but but you're not like them. And that's fu- and so that's what started those race riots out there. Yeah, man, but these day of dudes, man, they were hardcore, man. If you if you um if you re- read that book, the 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 history of the five points, man, they went out there, man. They were hanging black people, yeah. like, like if you look at those the the hangings in um gangs in New York, there's actually a f- they they show the actual clip, the news clip of the hanging, and they were like beating them up in the streets. Bro, how brutal were and, um, and and they, they were n- not only were they they beat the shit, they burned black people, and um and to. If you if you didn't want to go into the civil to go fight the civil war, you could pay the government three hundred dollars and you don't have to fight, man. Which was pretty much a joke, you know what I mean? So these people, after they went after, that's killed, like, that's like a hundred thousand or something. So nowadays. after they killed all the black dudes, they started going after people who look like they could afford three hundred dollars. Right. So yeah. then there was a, a regular white dude walking with a little drink with his cane. He looked like he has $300. They want to go fuck him up. <coughs> that, and, yeah. But this was crazy, man. Like, and it, it always goes down, man. Like, whenever something always happens, they always go after the smallest minority, which is back then was the black dudes. Right. And um, what was crazy to me about that movie was when the Irish people were getting off the boat and they were giving them a, they were giving them a union now for to go fight. Yeah. Go sign up, sign in to be an American citizen here. Great, you're an American citizen. Go over there and sign so up. So people to always fight. say the war was fought by Americans. Nah, man, it was fought by an Irish. It's always been fought by immigrants. I mean, even Vietnam. No, people say the, fo- the war was fought by Americans. Nah, it wasn't. Do do majority of Vietnam Vietnam uh, um, soldiers were black and and Hispanics and poor rednecks and poor, poor some poor rednecks St- standing in the back of people of color getting yeah, avoided man. bullets dude every war i don't know about the I Gulf war when, when 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 white people say that um there's no stuff white people think that white privilege means they get checks no yeah getting get white pri- people white people who who are confused and um and most a lot of la- black people and latinos who are confused they always think they think privilege Comes with paychecks. No man, privilege means that you're allowed to walk down the street yep. without worrying about the badge coming after you. Or if a cop passes by you, you don't trip because you, because you don't realize that. Oh, I'm a white dude and I have nothing. In your mind, you go, that cop's not gonna fuck with me because I have nothing. But yeah, man. Pri- white privilege has yeah. nothing to do with econ- econ- economy. No. Don't get confused. It's how you're fucking treated. Don't get confused by comedians who want to break down. White comedians uh, yeah. that want to break down white privilege in a comedy bit. Right. It's just a comedy bit. White privilege has nothing to do with, with dollars, has nothing to do with them giving you a sweater. Right. It has to do with like this, man. Like if you're in Mexico and you walk down the street, you, you're, you know you're going to get robbed by another Mexican. Right. So you're not worried about nothing. Right. You know what I mean? That's yeah. brown privilege. Right. But you know, you know what I mean? 
So, and then over here. the privilege of already knowing what's going to happen. I'll know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, you know, like over here, like, like, um, white people don't got to worry about why when a, when a, when a police car, when a, five white people can walk down the street anywhere in America and see two cop, a cop car with two police officers pass by, and white people will never think that that cop is going to make a U-turn and ask us what we're doing here. That's white privilege, I, I, okay? Because th- there's no way that me and Butch and two other, and Larry Bubba Brown and another Mexican dude right. can walk down the street in, a, in fucking Oklahoma City somewhere or and let that cop is going to make a U-turn or you're going to think about it. Right. I'll give you an example. When I was younger and we decided to go to like a concert or something, we had weed. My buddy would go, let's take my mom's Jetta. He's all, and he would literally say, I'm white, cops don't fuck with me. And what what he didn't say, because the phrase hadn't been coined yet, I guess, was, I have white privilege. They're not going to fuck with me because I have white privilege. They're not going to pull me over. They're not going to search my shit because I have white privilege. That's what that shit is. Yeah. Because if I'm driving in my car that doesn't have, that has expired tags or I have issues because I'm already poor because I'm fucking whatever, they're going to pull me over. And instead of going, oh, man, you're a, it's cool, man. F- figure out your shit. Get out of here. No, let's search them. Let's fucking go through everything because that's the two differences. And that's the thing is that you don't know that it's pr- the, your, your privilege because you've never had nothing bad happen to you. And that's what I think that's what the, the confusion comes from. They're like, I don't get what they're saying about white privilege. Well, you haven't had bad things happen to you. You never had a bad thing happen to you. You never, never had an adult make you sit on the curb. And, and and tell you to sit on the you never had another man tell you to sit on the curb and hand you your ID. You never for been no asked. You never been pulled over randomly for just driving and somebody asks you where you're going. Right. You never been a Glendale motherfucker. Yeah. The bothers me though is that it's a it's another an adult. It's another adult trying to cheat, treat me like a child, and that's where my problem with authority comes in. Because it's like. I'm just I I, I I have every right to be in this world just as much as you do. And you have no right other than that authority and that gun from a fake government or from some fucking indivisible entity that allows you to make me sit on this curb. And it's like, you know, I mean And that's why man, like I, I used to have that joke. I said, man, when, I used to say, man, when white people get pulled over at night, it's good, you know, cause they get to stay inside the car. You know their music. They can they could they could still listen to Three Eleven right. as loud as they want. You know, and that. they could eat, it could be eating yogurt in there. You know, and 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 they never were. And <laughs> when you get pulled over, when you're a person of color like us, yeah, they ask for the ID of everybody in the car in the who's car. not even driving. Right. I didn't even do anything. Why am I gotta give you my ID? Like a white person will get pulled over and and tell the cop, sir, but I'm not driving. And a, and a person of color knows not to say that. Right. Totally. He, he's going to come out of the car, too. I think of that Chuck Martell joke. <laughs> he goes, I went to touch his gun. And oh, yeah. Like, why, like this is a white privilege joke right here, man. We have a comedian who worked with us. His name is Chuck Bartell. Shout out to Chuck. And he has a joke where he says, yeah, the the the, the, police, the police pulled me over. And yeah, and I, I looked at the cop and I asked him, don't you have some people of color to kill right now? Right. And then the cop just looked at me, and I looked back at him, and I made a reach for his gun, and we both looked at each other and had a big laugh. Yeah. <laughs> That's white privilege. We had a big laugh and walked away. That's white privilege. That's white privilege. That's white privilege. That's white privilege. Yeah. That's and, acknowledging. And if you laugh too. at that joke if you're white, it's because you get white privilege. Stop bullshitting. Yeah. Stop bullshitting. Yeah, you and that's why the, we, that's, that's that why, if, if, that's why we form um Mexican Americans, Asian Americans, Irish Americans, um we they form gangs right. for protection. And getting back to Irish, right here in downtown LA by dark, by um Chinatown, there was an area just for Irish people. It was called Dogtown. Okay. And it, and now and then they changed it to the Dogtown projects, but they still hang out right there. And it's still is it Mexicans that live there? Mexicans, now? no. Okay. So um so you have the five points. You have you have Bill Poole gone now, and then things start to change. Cops start to come in. Um, 
and and now it's and now uh, the the fire department fought for municipality against it. And now they're now they're municipalized, and and so there's they're getting funded. And there's no more fighting, and then the, things start to change. And then around um, this time, you have Italian immigrants starting to come in, and and the Five Points now is no longer Bowery Boys and Dead Rabbits. It's all just one conglomeration. Yeah, of, man. Uh, like, one fucked up gang. It's like 1909 now. Yeah. And um, Italian immigrants came in f- from everywhere, man. They came in f- from Italy, from Sicily, from Calabria, from Pol- Pol- from fucking um, the other one, the, the Comora, or the, the Naples, and um, and this and the, and just just like every other immigrant, Italians were scammed. Coming into America too, I read a. Did you were you telling me about how they were? Yeah, how they started in Sicily though, where they were they like they were formed with the uh, the guys watch with uh, the property watchers were the guys with these guns, and they were the only guys that had guns. No, Um, but I know that the voyage to America was hard, man, because they come from. Italy, right? right. And, they, and they had to stop different places. But also, when they were selling trips to America, in the, like in the 1900s, they were selling trips to New Orleans. Okay. So a lot of the first Italians came to New Orleans, to bro. New Orleans. To the south. Because they lied to them and told them that um, the trip from New Orleans is really it's like a two day, tri- an hour trip or two day trip to oh New York. Oh my God! So it was a cheaper ride to America, and it's still like so, what, three months. Or so when they like got that. to New Orleans, they were like, "What? We're not even close to New York." So they got to settle there, and um, there was a, a lot of Italians, man, and Italian mafia that that started in um, in New Orleans, and. Um, and I and there was a there was a big old rivalry, bro. Like Irish people against Italians. Okay. And they 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 killed. Uh, there was a dirty, dirty ass cop, bro, in New Orleans, who was Irish, and they killed that fool, bro. And when they they killed that fool, that fool lied and said it was an Italian fool, and they went looking for Italian, to, huh? Chief David Hennessy, bro. Okay. He lied, dog, and then they went out to killing a lot of Italian fools. Wow, like genocide. Yeah, like wow. not genocide, but you know, it's, it's but, New Orleans. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, not genocide, but like it was like, more like uh, the 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 gangs in New York when they just dra- start dragging fools up and beating them up. How did the so so what happens to these these Italians living in in New Orleans? Do they settle there? Do they go to New York? Some a lot of them just settled there, bro. I, I, some of these guys. Like the, the, the like if you watch um that movie uh, Carlitos Car, not Carlitos way um um Johnny Brasco Donnie Brasco yes that old Italian guy they meet in Florida uh-huh. Traficante okay his father was a a, a a member of the of the Italian mafia in New Orleans oh wow. and his father Traficante Don Traficante okay he was like he sp- he learned how to speak Spanish. An Italian, bro. Okay. So, he, so this guy was one of the first Italians to have a bunch of Cubans, bro. Because in in Florida in those days, when they were when they were they were they were rolling up cigars, yeah, it was all Italians, bro. Italians and Span and Spanish speaking people, Cubans. Whoa. Yeah, and some black dudes, and they were all rolling cigars, bro. They were all uneducated people rolling cigars all day, okay, and um. And Traficante, he he brought a game over from from Cuba called Bolita. Bolita, Bolita, look it up, B-O-L-I-T-A. It's the same thing they have in New York called the Numbers, which is a, a street form lottery. Like bingo. Yeah, more like a lottery. Okay, more like a lottery. It's a lottery. You pick you 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 buy numbers off a guy. Ah. Uh, and okay. the bolita is the ball. Yeah, the ball. Right. The, yeah, the yeah. ball drop. You're right. It's like the lottery. Yeah, okay. The, you're right. The, the lottery ball. Right. The bolita. Yeah, yeah dog. 
yeah, bolita. What am I, an idiot? And um, so these guys will buy bolita off him, you know, and they will, everybody was buying gambling. <coughs> when I was in Tampa, Florida, I met a guy in Fox News, and he, he's that fucking Cuban guy smoked me out, bro. And um, That's hilarious. From he, Fox? Yeah, he's a Fox News reporter on the radio, and him and I, we smoked out. He retired already. Shout out to the homie. Yeah, he 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 t- he he gave me a tour on Tampa, and he told me the bolita story. Check this out, man. These uneducated cigar rollers in in Tampa, Florida, they were all they all had money. They were making money. They were playing bolita, and they they formed a union of cigar rollers, all the cigar rollers, and they were pay. They were all pitching money. Because there was no radio back then. There was no you can't. There was no radio playing for them to be educated. So they were hire. They were hire a guy named called Elector, a lecturer, Elector. And that fool would read the newspaper on a, on a, on a, on a podium, well, podium while they were rolling cigars, and he'll, he'll read the newspaper, the sports. The, the business oh, dope. in English and he'll read it in Spanish. Okay. So they got CNN and Fox right in Spanish there. right there, right? <laughs> and <laughs> when he will, he will do it the whole, through the whole day while they're eat while they're working. Eight hours, he's up there for eight hours. He will stop and then he will read Shakespeare in Spanish to them. Okay. So these fucking dudes were educated, dog. Right. That's why when you go to Florida and you talk about their politics, there's a reason why these people know politics. Right. Like the the, the Spanish people. Right. And the Italians over like there. They're really into it. They were yeah. they were educated, bro, by a lecturer. Right. So that's that Italian side, bro. Okay. So that that there's like a real beef. So with that it. so so those families were in now, did the mafia start did the New Orleans mafia start in New Orleans, or did New Orleans mafia culture make its way down to New Orleans? And then that's the like, that, well, that's that, good idea. that was just the mob there, bro. Okay, like, like they were not even a big crew because there was also a hillbilly mafia, also, too, from the old days, bro. Like a mafia for for rednecks, right? That was from the from the <laughs> from the south to Texas, really. They're what are they called, Philip? They're called the Dixie Mafia. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, and it, and if you watch a movie called Claws, a show called Claws, the Dixie Mafia is all up in that show, and they, they show you like a little history about them, and they're all rednecks. And if you look up Dixie Mafia, look up um, they, they 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 um they went into Florida and Kentucky, and they got certified to be fucking providers of of drugs. And they opened up a uh, meth, a uh, uh, fentanyl, and fucking oxy labs, bro. Legal ones. Oh wow, no shit. Yeah, when but was this? What period of time was this? This is all the fifties. Well, okay. nothing now. Now, but they talk. This is in the, that show Claws. They talk about that. I want to check this out. It's a comedy, bro. It's stupid, but they, they're the Dixie Mafia. Wow, and that's a real thing. The Dixie. It's a real mafia, real bro. It's a real thing, bro. It's all in the South. They're not. They're they're not big, like you know, but. Trust me, bro. They're the good old boys. Just a mean and no uh, harm. Yeah, moonshine like a motherfucker, bro. Beats all you never had, bro. You know, drag racing, man. You know, drag racing, you know, yeah. that I got started? Uh, from uh, Moonshine Moonshine runs. runs. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. How they, the mob would use these rednecks to, um, because, you know, nobody's going to pull over white people, okay? White privilege. Right. Because you, you, you see a guy with a big ass nose. A fucking two thousand dollars, a, a five hundred dollars suit in nineteen oh eight. Right, and that car looks like a normal car. But you get a redneck making out with his sister in the car. Right. You know, <laughs> and they, you give him two goats and a what maga hat dirty? and a maga hat. Yeah. Of course, he could drive with ten pounds of coke. Right. Well, okay. So that were they were used rednecks. To to bring in the the alcohol from Canada all right. the way to in New York. Oh, so they would run it up and run it back down. Yeah, and okay. when they were and when they were um, bringing in moonshine from the mountains, they were going so fast, right? Because right. they wanted to avoid the cops, yeah. and they wanted to avo- they would soup up their car so fast. Right, but they looked normal on the yeah, outside. Yeah, and right? they would and they would soup up their car so fast 
that they became the first hot rods. Yeah. And they would compete with each other to who could make the fastest moonshine run. Right. And that was the beginning of NASCAR. Right. You know the word NASCAR comes from? No. It was a redneck staring at a car and said, that's a NASCAR. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were being serious for History a for fools. <laughs> So the, uh, let's go over to New York now. Let's talk about the New York gang, bro. The 70s, the 50s. The, 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 remember the 50s, the fives. Okay, so my whole like like um my whole vision of the, that time was electric uh breaking, electric boogaloo, right? Um uh, what was the other movies called? There was Street Beat. Um, Beat Street. Beat Street. Poppin'. Was there one called Poppin'? Or am I just making that up in my head? We'll have one now. There we go. So, um, War of the Warriors? The Warriors was kind of right. The Warriors was all about that. How could I forget Bro, that? Yeah, totally. Boulevard Nights, American Me, Blood and Blood Out were great. Right. But if you're from the 80s, the 70s, yeah. And if you your mom had a VHS, yeah. <laughs> how badass are the fucking Warriors? Fucking dude, that movie was so I I I thought that was all made up. And I always, in my mind, too. wished that that life had been like that. But I didn't know that that movie, Hell's Angels Forever, when the, the Hell's Angels were in that movie, Hell's Angels Forever, yeah. and they were wearing that vest, I didn't know yeah. that, that the vest of, well, in New York, there was a lot of gangs, the Warriors, and then wearing those vests, I didn't know that they took it from that movie. Because nobody was wearing that shit. Um, yeah, the black gangs. Because they didn't even have motorcycles. They were wearing vests. Right, huh? the black gangs were taking... They watched that movie, which was made by Real Hell's Angels. Sonny Barger helped make that movie. Like in, like in Chicago, the gangster disciples, they were wearing vests like they that, They started too. to wear vests and emulate. Again, uh, emulation of co- counterculture with, with, with how you dress. and So you got these guys wearing They saw vests. it on TV. I'm going to dress like that. We should have comedy gangs. And we, I want a vest that's like fucking... They are comedy gang, bro. There's the 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 hacky comics from Hollywood, <laughs> and then the the fool that never leave Riverside, <laughs> and the fool that only perform at at, at fucking at Pete Munoz's room. <laughs> like I know, the, like like there's the comedy gang. Like if you have a comedy spot for ten years and you kill there, you go years, hate yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, that's the th- bro. That is so true, bro. There is comedy gangs, dude. Cause that's the thing, bro. Is cause back home, I'm gonna get in trouble now. Back home, it's like I'll get people that are like, "You're supposedly from San Jose, but now you live up in San Francisco, and you fucking blah blah blah." And I'm like, I don't fucking give a fuck where I'm from, bro. I'm just trying to do comedy. You're but wearing is, turtlenecks now, bro. Huh? There is a there is a group of people that feel that. Oh, you're from San Jose, but now you think you, you're you're doing comedy up in the. You just don't understand, man. What's it like to be a a Mexican comedian who grew up in the hood? It's different from the comedians who grew up in Texas. Like, right. I gotta worry about getting sock check at a meeting greet. It happens. I've seen it. I fucking have seen it happen a few. Times. I gotta worry about somebody calling out. Some bullshit I said a year ago. Bro, <laughs> sometimes someone will roll up and they'll be like, hey, I'm from this blah, blah, blah neighborhood. And it's like, oh, no. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, wow. Like, you know, I used to know you and blah, blah, blah. And- or someone will walk up to you, bro, who's strong but not as fat or as big as us. Yeah. He goes, bro, little guy get out to move too. Seriously, bro. When I used- Bro, seriously, though. Little short guys yeah. who are big, yeah. get out to move too. I want you to know that. <laughs> they do. They have done that to me. They're like, hey, I get asked to move. And I'm like, sure you do, buddy. You, wh- What are you reaching for? The second shelf? He like, Tom Barry has a bit about, he goes, you know, like, how, uh, he goes, every time I, I mention someone else, another state that has ta- great tacos, I always get a guy go, walk up to me, like, from, bro. California. Did I ever tell you when I used to? Because Tom Barry had a bit about um, talking about tacos from another state, and yeah. somebody walks up to him from California at the end of the oh, show. Oh, God. Hey, seriously, bro. California. 
Nah. Or somebody gonna That's walk so up to funny. us about about the gang culture and go like this, bro. Seriously, Yakima. So I Yakima. That's where LA gangsters go to retire. I did a bunch of shows when I first started coming out here with George Perez. No knowledge of what's going on with gang shit out here, bro. Nothing, dude. Um, and I honestly, like I said, I'm not gang affiliate. <laughs> I didn't have anybody. F I wasn't in a gang. And I didn't know that, like, over here, it's, like, a little different than that. If you grow up in a neighborhood, you just, this is the culture. So I'm doing these shows. I'm talking about being from the Bay Area. This has happened numerous times after doing George Perez shows in, in Santa Ana, where someone will come up to me and go, hey, bro, even though you're a fucking buster, you're hella funny, but just because you're George's homie, I'm not going to fucking stab you. <laughs> bro, I've seen... Oh, so many times people I've, threaten to I've heard, me at George I've Perez seen shows. people say that bro, about people that... That I have brought, he goes, bro, hey, bro, that 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 little Norteño from you brought was funny, bro. And they're talking about Chris Thorne. <laughs> Chris Thorne. And like, bro, he's not even affiliated. Dog. He's not even. He's half white, and he doesn't know Spanish. Or he'll say that he's from the Bay, boo. Right? Yeah, that's. Oh man, certain states you can't say. I've learned not to say. I'm from it's the weird. Bay. Like I never mentioned where I'm from because they know exactly when I talk. Right. But like, I know that when people mention their city or a team, it's downhill after that. I never bring up um, uh, Niner Raiders. I never say Raiders or Niners in the I know I messed up in Monterey, bro. Because, oh, dude, because it's like five minutes of them yelling shit out to each other. It's fucking ridiculous. I just was, I just was talking about um, a story that happened to me, and it happened to you, mentioned that what team it was and what color it was. Right. No, they went nuts. They went and they started yelling at each other, right? Um, yeah. I know we're talking about uh, New York Street gangs, but um, I, I, when I when I was reading about um, Samuel Bill Gravano, okay, he was in an Italian, he was in a gang in New York called the Ramblers. You said yeah, he started out in a street gang. He was, in, he was it was called the Ramblers, right. and um, and um, the Ramblers were a gang that the Columbos used to recruit out of. Where were the Ramblers? Do you know what like what area or borough they were in? Well, wherever wherever he's from, because okay. he was he was when he was he was with the Gambino family, but he was originally a Colombo, so I'm pretty sure he probably was from the from I from um, um Hell's Kitchen probably. So almost the same way Lower East Side. So almost the same way the Mexican mafia recruits out here, the Italian mafia was doing the same thing. Recruiting well, not out really. There. They're in Brooklyn. I don't really. I don't not necessarily. Because I don't think the I don't think prison gangs come out of prison and recruit a guy in the streets. Okay. They don't do that. They don't do that. Prison gangs don't do that. Okay. Prison gangs recruit you when you're already in prison. Why right, would they, I mean right. why would they go out looking for a guy well, that's I mean, never gonna a, be in sure, prison? Totally. It's a Absolutely. big mistake. Totally. I mean, why would you go out there No, but an Italian mob is different, bro, because Italian mob doesn't have a a foothold in prison. Got it. So that they have to re Retaliate mob has to recruit people who are fucking free, bro. Right. Cause they want money to be right. made. Their money is be the, the, money that, the, the, the money. The money that Italian generate goes to people who are who are in um who are out in the streets. People in prison are generating money for people who are in prison. Right. So you why would you when you, you I guess they will need to they 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 recruit in prison. That's very interesting. The recruitment process out there for them. Um, cause if there's like there's a guy, just say there's a guy, like he's from the Ramblers, right? Okay. And they're already crazy, and um, someone needs to put someone needs a job to be done, and they want it, they don't want it to be in house. They want it to be like outsourced. Right. So they probably go to one of the Ramblers, and they know like which they know by reputation, you know which one is the hitter, and they go for them. And another thing I read was that um, that have you ever seen that um, that um, they would they would bring in pe people from Sicily to do kit hits here in America, okay. so there would be no trace back. They're called buttons. Uh, was that guy in uh, the Sopranos uh, that they brought in from Sicily, Rufio? Rufio. Rufio. Would he? So he'd be like that. No, he he that fool came in to be an actual member. Oh, he came in. He's already a. Right. He was a. He was a. He was a made guy. Okay. And it and it and so, uh, but Naples. they would just bring separate hitmen from there to here. Yeah. 
Wow. They were called Button and and um and um they they were all there was a guy from the um Bonano family. Okay. Who, who or the Colombo family that was killed in the beginning of uh, Donnie Brasco. And he he was he was killed with a cigarette in his mouth. Yeah, I remember that. Well, that guy that guy was from born in Sicily and um he was um he decided cause, to run a heroin empire, right? Right. But um, they were all against drug all against drugs. Nobody would back him, right? Right. So this fool had to go to America, Italy, and told a bunch of um, Italian mafia guys there, hey, listen, man, if you want to come to America, it's all open. You could be part of my crew, and uh, we could deal heroin. Oh. So that's why you got all these, these every pizza parlor yeah. in New York sold heroin. Really? Wow. That's when you get the the pizza the, the war called the pizza wars. That's a fucking real thing, then. Yeah, he was. I, he I was, remember hearing about. He this. was part of the pizza wars. What that, happened with the pizza wars? Well, um, the pizza wars was was when um what, that that what guy was this? huh? Sorry, what era is this? This is like um, nineteen fifties. Okay. Yeah. So you have pizza parlors that are run by the mafia. Yeah, cause th- this gangster right here, uh-huh. he bought all the pizza parlors. Okay. And he put in, he put in Italian people who don't speak that much good English to work the pizza parlors. Okay. And they were dealing, they were money laundering and taking money out of those, out of those pizza parlors. And you could see a little bit of these pizza parlors in that movie um, with Denzel Washington and the guy from Gladiator. American Gangster. To see oh, what, that's to see what right. happened was there was a, a lot of drugs coming in okay. from France. It was called a French Connection. Yeah, that's where that term comes from. Yeah, but before okay. that, a, a lot of drugs were coming in from Italy, bro. The guy from that family, the one that was killed, he started opening up um, heroin farms and heroin in labs Italy. in Italy, bro. This and and, and, and it was and it was bringing that, that shit over there to wow. America. Hooking, wow. Hook, everybody was hooked, bro. They were like the jazz singers, all those people that get hooked on heroin. So And he was not sharing the money, dog. So the heroin trade at that time wasn't coming out of like Afghanistan or like Kashmir or any of those places. France. Fucking crazy, bro. Like if you if you see the movie The French Connection. No, I've never seen with, that. Um, with um with um with Gene Hackman. It starts off with um the guy talking about making a deal to bring a bunch of heroin into America. Anyways, well, in that movie, in that movie with um, Denzel Washington, what's the movie called? American Gangster? Yeah, it's a good movie. Well, in the movie The French Connection, they bust that dude's heroin, and he goes back to France, but then he comes back and starts dealing more heroin. Well, that heroin right? and, and, and um, original gangster was stolen by the police. Uh... Then the police... Well, washing it down yeah. and selling it all fucking nasty wow. to fucking um to um to what's his name um the guy before Denzel Washington I, I can't think of uh, that guy name was um was um fuck his name is um Amer- uh, what's his name uh, with, with a lazy eye playing him on Hulu. Fuck what's his name? His name is Joe Hampton. Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson. He he did time in Alcatraz. And um he started buying heroin from the Italians. And um he 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 was he he was like the one of the one of the few black guys that could that could sit down with the Italian mob. And Bumpy Johnson he used to run numbers for a woman named um the Queen St. Clair. The Queen Saint Clair was a an African um, African woman. Look it up, sir, sir, Madame Saint Clair. Madame Saint Clair. Madame Saint Clair was the old fucking G. She had all black. All her crew was all men, and they were all hitters. She was running the numbers in Harlem. Okay, the Dutchmen, the Dutchmen, Dutch. 
The, the Dutchman was the Irish gangster, an Italian uh, Jewish gangster. That's a real name for a real person. That was the girl, that was the wow. dude she was beefing with. Dutch, Dutch Schultz. Schultz. Oh, Dutch Schultz. Okay. Dutch Schultz and her beef. Oh, and when, wow. Um, and when um, she was done, that when Bumpy Johnson came in. Okay. And after Bumpy Johnson, it was Frank Lucas, baby. Wow. So that's the little history of black gangsters in Harlem for you guys. There you go. Wow. History for fools. History for fools, bro. Damn. Or, or worse with information, whatever the fuck you want to call it, homie. We could go to toe to toe, bitch. Let's go, bitch. Do you remember fighting people, bro? This is old school. Okay. Putting a, a little a little a little pencil on their shoulder. On their shoulder. No, what the fuck? That's old school shit right there, bro. You put a that guy puts a, a like you really down fool, and then he'll put you down, and they'll put a pencil on the shoulder, and if you knock it off, you start fighting. Whoa, okay. That's Wow, I never heard of that before. Like you have one and I have one, right? And whoever like knocks off the other pencil is the guy that we that starts the fight. So then you swing first once you get your pencil. Knocked Cheap off. shot, bro. Wow, we every once in a while. Okay, so the neighborhood I grew up in was kind of our like leader. Lush life of our of our um what? Lush life. Lush crew. Lush crew. So the dude that was kind of in charge of us, or like our leader, was this dude named... Shout out to Jason Cervantes. This guy's like my older brother. JC, bro. homie. And he was... He used to have a, a boxing... A, um, a, what is it? A ring in his garage. And so for us, bro, if we beefed amongst each other, it was... he would, And he was there, he'd be all, both of you, back to the gym. Let's go. Let's have it out. And, you, and at that point, bro, you didn't have a choice. This is the fool that fucking punched a cop, bro. This is the fool that did, he doesn't give a fuck, bro. He he back to the gym. Let's go. And then at that point, if you're like, no, nah, I don't want to fight. All right, everybody, fuck these fools up. You know what I mean? Like something like that, bro. So like, that's like that's how we got down. But I remember one time, we, the, these two guys wanted to fight each other, so they tied their shoes to each other. They're Damn. like their left legs to each other. Kind of like the the old wrestling match when they would tie up two people in. The- with a dog chain to their neck, the yeah. fucking dog chain match. And you just swing until someone falls. And then once that person falls, you know, it's over. That was the cool thing in my neighborhood, bro, is one, actually nobody got jumped. Like, there, you got the only time you got jumped is if you passed out with your shoes on. If you passed out at a party with your shoes on, you got fucked up for that shit. Like, don't pass. If you want to pass out, take your fucking shoes off. But the other, But other than that, if there was a fight between two homies, the homies had to have it out. Nobody fucking jumped in. If you got jumped in, you got fucked up by everybody else. So I, I do remember that. Because that was the one thing, man, growing up. We weren't a fucking gang, but we were tough as fuck because of that dude. Because he taught us how to fight. He taught us how to fucking deal with each other. And when someone came into our neighborhood, nobody fucked with us. But that's kind of the shit that we would do, bro. Yeah, man. There's nothing good about gang banging unless you're involved. Right. That's how I feel. Nah, that was a joke. I say. There's nothing oh. good about gang banging except that they all carpool. <laughs> they're like come on homie let's all go to jail together <coughs> i think if you yeah i don't think there's anything good about gang first of all none of this everything we're doing like don't join gangs dude i don't hey I man mean, do you think like because like hollywood is a liar sometimes you know Hollywood's a big fucking liar like like in hollywood movies they'll show a drive-by and they'll have a guy driving a car that's very noticeable right <laughs> or it's his car that's the fucking best part. It's like he's driving his car later in another scene. And it's like, bro, like, bro, he, yeah, he just killed somebody <laughs> in that fluorescent green bomber. Right, dude. Yeah. Now he's fucking a chick in a car. You should hide, Crucito. Or like, yeah, they would like be in like a dope lowrider. And fucking. Yeah, bro. Like, they just finished jumping somebody. Yeah. And now he's fucking a chick in a car. Wepa, wepa, wepa. <laughs> Hey, bro, growing up with that movie, though, dude, like, you know Blood what and I mean? blood out, you wearing a shirt, bro. Let everybody see the shirt. Hey. Wepa, wepa, wepa. Wepa, wepa. wepa. Oh, yepa, yepa. Yepa, yepa. yepa. Hey, bro, that is fucked up, how huh? the way they do him like that. Spider or the, or, uh. Crucito, Crucito. bro. Yeah, dude, they fucking... Bro, when they broke his back, I was like, why do you have to break his back, dude? And they don't show this, but in real life, they would have they raped that chick, huh? 
They totally would have raped that chick, bro. I don't think they fucking drove her home. Huh? And then, and then the whole thing with Spider. Well, that was. Do you, do you think that would have been a real situation? Put writing a big VL on him? No, he would have been dead. Right. Like they, there was too much drama on him. But then again, maybe um in the movie. I don't know. Maybe in the movie he was following code while he didn't die. He didn't die. Crucito didn't get killed. Is that movie based off anything, or that was like all a fantasy? No. Like, was there a real Miklo? Yeah. Well, Miklo's based on on a on a real character. Um, when when um they they made Blood and Blood out. Um, it was written about the same time they made American Me. Okay, I remember that. But when we when we had Damon Chop on the podcast, he said the real Miklo. He said that um, the book, the book, it's a very long book, and um, it was just almost he bought the rights to the to the Cardena version of it, like okay. he, like you know you have the Bible, right. the book according to Luke, right, and the, and the book you according have the King to James, Paul, James according to Luke, all that stuff. No, yeah. the book according to Paul, the book according to Luke, oh, okay. and like their version the of chapters, it. Chapters, yeah, yeah. So the version that Everett almost bought. Was with uh with uh, Rene Cardenas, I get his name right, and um, the part that oh you're talking about um um Cheyenne Cheyenne Cardenas uh, Rudy Rudy Cheyenne Cardenas Sh- Rudy Cheyenne Cardenas Cardena, he bought Cardena, he Cardena, bought that sorry. story, and the guy f- from um, Blood and Blood Out Milford or Medford yeah the director he took the 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 J D side you know J D from American Me. Yes, um, who's real? That's real, real name character. is J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan, yeah. Yeah, he was like, um, he was a Ukrainian. Um, he was he was white. He was the first white guy to join the Mexican mafia. Okay. And right. while they took it, blood and blood out was loosely based on the his version, right? Oh. Yeah, because the story is more more based on Miklo than it so is about. So J.P. Morgan is Miklo. Yeah. Whoa, really? Supposedly. Okay. And J.D. in American Me is J.P. Morgan, because I read a I read right. a, I read an article where they where they asked J.P. Morgan about the uh, about the movie and and he had, he had no comment. Right. That's interesting. I really want to know though. Yeah, he had no comment. Yeah, that's a really interesting. And, and I, I will, I will, I will. When I, when I, he died of natural causes, um, J.P. Morgan. Um, I, I read somewhere that when he would, when they would transfer him to different prisons, they would transfer him in helicopters because he was such a high risk that people, would, people would, would try to take him out just to get like, um, to have the juice, really, to have the the the, the that, to, they, that they killed that guy, to have the power. For when he when he will walk through cells with guards, the guards will have a sliding metal thing that will walk with him, so you won't try to harpoon him. Oh wow! So there'll be a guard right here and a guard right here holding a metal f- sliding door that was used to protect him from the no other. shit like shields. And shields, shit. bro! Wow! He was uh, this guy was like highly high core core dog, right. and, uh, like the truest. One of the last OG. What's your favorite gangster story? Like out of all movies? This, huh? Movies? No, like just lore. Like, like it could either be movies or it could be like a myth or it could be like, damn, that was dude. This motherfucker came in. Did you? Was there any of that stuff going around? Like in real life or in the movies? In real life. Well, there was a guy from the neighborhood named Wolf. Okay. And that's the fool that fought that cop while right. the homie was getting beat up in a car. Yeah. And that fool fight everybody, bro. He had 500 fights. And he had, like, upper body. He, he looked like mean mascaras, bro. He had, like, an upper body, Nacho Libre wrestler body. Right. Like that wrestler in Nacho Libre with a gold mask. Yeah. Ramses, he had that body. Oh, okay. With baby legs. Yeah, yeah, the legs. <laughs> fucking, yeah. Bro, one time he was fighting this guy named Brian Merritt. And that fool was not a gangbanger. He was one of those dudes from high school that would go to West Hollywood to pick up on white chicks. Oh, uh, Okay. The fool lived in the projects, bro, and would go to Westwood to pull white chicks and bring them to the hood. And then they'll run home, bro. <laughs> and they'll, they'll run home on their Suzuki Samurai. Uh. That fool was crazy, bro. Me and my friends were seven of us when he was in 
like in high school. Yeah. We were like in elementary. We would fuck with him, and he would fight us. He was like, well, try to jump him, bro. Right. Yeah. But he would really, he would, he would punch us. He would like punch us in our arm or give us a Charlie horse or yeah. our chest. Uh-huh. But he didn't beat us up, but we would, we would try him, bro. Right, yeah. Uh, he wanted us to try him. That's the, that's like that dude Jason from my neighborhood. So we would try him. Would do shit like this fool would wear a belt, a leather belt, weightlifting belt, biker shorts, like same bag, because that was the style. Right. And a tank top. And on a belt and a fucking belt, he rode Killing Urge. Wow, he was a gangster. Or, or, or he'll ride Black Power. That fool was a gangster. Or he'll ride Try Me. Wow, test me. So him and Wolf were fighting, dog. Have you ever seen that movie? Have you ever seen those street fights with Kimbo? Kimbo Slice. It was yes. one of those fights, but instead of like staying in that yard. It went to somebody's house, right? And and then it went to somebody else's backyard. They went into a liquor store, liquor store, and fuck with Charlie. And then they kept fighting, like everywhere way but loose, like yeah. Clean Eastwood. Yeah, bro, they kept fighting. They fucking grabbed some tool that was, that was the paisa Jesus. fixing a the car. They grabbed that tool and they hit each other with it. And finally, bro, they were both got tired of fighting, bro. It was a big crowd. Nobody called the cops. That dude, Brian Mary, bro, he fucking goes back to that paisa and takes his, takes his gasoline from him. And he pours it on that fool's body, bro. No way. And he takes out a lighter and he goes, it's up to you, man. You want to keep fighting, but I'll just kill your ass. Yeah, bro. The fight was over. Well, that was like one of the best fights I've ever seen in my life. You watched this happen? Yes. And, um, and I have friends that are, if you're listening, Rafa Moran, Jose Lopez, Cheerios, George, Taboo, Angel, um, Bibby James, Duty, Rudy, Raleigh, um, Irma. You lived right in front of that. She had right in front of your house, bitch. You know that shit went down. <laughs> History for fools, man. Yeah, that's a good story, man. That's a good one. I. Uh, but in my neighborhood, bro, I don't have one as as, as there good was as no that no no such thing as like bikers or nothing like that. Like that that I didn't see that shit to the nineties where when fools were buying Suzuki Samurais, right? And then, and I started seeing bikers, bro. Like there was a big biker gang called the East LA Bikers. And they were like Suzuki riders, like uh, Suzuki's. Then they got Harley's. Like when crotch they, rocket. When, uh, oh, they switched over to Harley. When they started selling dope, they got Harley's. Okay. But they ran East LA, bro. Really, really. And, and were they sanctioned by like? They were sanctioned by themselves. They were san- so like so the local club here, they, they, like the big they, club here didn't 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 fuck with them. No, the rockers right don't look like bicycle club rockers right. There's no patch, right? Okay. There's no, you would have never. They're, they're, they're so not, you wouldn't know that they existed. They exist, but they're not. A, they don't. They're not patch members like a, like a Hell's Angels, or a, Mongol. a Galloping Goose, or a Mongo right. Outlaws. You could right away tell how different these two groups are. Okay. Because they 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 wear like the whole ninja outfit, bro. Right. And it just has. East LA biker in glossy letters. Oh wow! Okay. Wow. Because and then there's. They're not the only ones. There's black guys who are, who are bikers who have um they they dress. There's Asian guys. Oh shit! They're, they're they're all and these guys like modern day party crews too. Yeah, they just yeah. throw parties and they go to Ensenada, Glamis. Wow. They don't gangbang. That's crazy. Cause I that mean sh- that shit doesn't exist in the Bay. Like like you can't have a motorcycle club if it's not sanctioned by the big club. Because the big club will come by and be like, "You owe us money, or you have to disband." No, nah, man, they don't. They don't do that over here, because um, they know that these guys are not gangbangers, and they know that these guys are not there to take anything from you. They're not there. Right. To, they're, when you see them, they're, 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 they have their wives, they have their kids, they have picnics, and you see that they're a family. Sure, sure, that's interesting. And they cruise ten deep. Going fast on the freeway and they're ninjas. Like fast. Yeah, and if you yeah. go to um any event, 
You see them all over the place. Okay. You see by you see oh, Asians. So these are like just club clubs, though. Yeah. But you said those guys were dealing drugs, though, right? Which the, ones? The L.A. bikers. The LA? No. No, they weren't. What well, they it? thought it. Well, if they did, I know they did because I just know they did because right. they're, they're they were they had Harleys now. Wow. But they okay. both these guys had both bikes. Right on. And they would race other fools. I had. Like they'll get in the, free, in the middle of the freeway, and and fucking race somebody for five Gs. Give me your bike if you lose. And in my neighborhood, growing up, there's Mo there's mongos, mm -hmm. and um, there's vagos, right? And there's um, East LA bikers, and then there's a, a lot of other bikers that were they have ninjas, and they're like, some of these guys are not even a, they're not even no they're not a club they're not they're not um they're not they have no names and they have no affiliations, but they're like. Ten friends that ride together. See, we have those. But if you're dealing drugs or you're doing anything illegal and you're doing that as a group, the big group. Here too, here too if you're 30 deep yeah. rolling into a fucking strip bar all badass. Yeah, they'll come after you. And if you're walking around all badass yeah. somewhere, somebody will make a phone call. They'll do that here. They'll do that where. Because I remember they, there was, um, I wouldn't say that it was the East LA bikers, but I know that. We were doing comedy at a, at a spot where they were always showing up now. They were always there, and they were always with the hot chicks, and they were always there. And then one day, a, a real com a, a big-ass club came in, and those fools stood up, and they were in a comedy show, and they started doing their preach, their, their doing their um, whatever... Um, slogan they have Their or whatever credo or whatever credo yeah, yeah. And um, then people were leaving i had a friend who owned a bar in san francisco this is how fucking tight they are in, in san francisco hell's angels yes so i had a friend who ran a bar and he and it was under there mexicans in hell's angels not many um hell's angels had an whites only policy back then though for a while they they said that they don't, but there was, dude. There was. That's how Mongols got started because they, uh, the they didn't angels have, said they no. Didn't like, yeah, there was a couple. There was like a black guy. There was like a Hawaiian guy, but they kind of didn't fuck with like um with with minorities at the very beginning, and that's I, what the Mongols. I heard that there's out. a there's only um there's only um one gang that the Hell's Angels fucks with. And they're black, and that's the closest you'll ever get to any other. East Bay Dragons. And, and yeah, that's the close. They're considered really like the Black House Angels. Yeah, they are. Because they, that's the yeah. closest. They were. They have a. They're out of Oakland. They have a. They, they have a, a. Their emblem is a red circle with a cross, huh? No, it's. I. I don't remember. It's a. Dr it's. Do you know what it might be? I'm not gonna say. But they've been around be. forever. They've Let's been around get that out of the time, way. Yeah. Huh? Oh, you're chosen talking about the few. chosen few. Okay, yeah. So that's the chosen few. I know because they they they're um they're big. They're just so, they're everybody. So I don't know if they're exclusive to one group because I know that the Hell's Angels and the, the uh, Black Dragons get along because they're both out of Oakland. So the Hell's Angels started in two different places, according to lore. San Bernardino, um, I hear. San Bernardino, what Rodrigo said. And Oakland, and San Bernardino. But I think. When they when they finally decided it was out of Oakland, what so, I what I read with what I read years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Hell's Angels was started in San Bernardino, and um, just in San Bernardino, and um, when um, when they when um, when they when um, when it, it was started in Hell's Angels, yeah, when it started in Oakland. That um, they, that that guy went over there, San Bernardino, and said, "I'm the president now." No. And then he went over there to other places because there was a lot of house angels, you how, this, a lot that, of house angels this, opening up everywhere. This is how it happened. Because I know that Sam, that that guy Barger, he went to a place and said, "I am the president now." Right. Okay. This is how it happened. Okay. Huh? Fontana San Bernardino. So here's how it happened. Here's how it, here's how the Hells Angels want us to know that it happened. Um, so officially, um, Sonny Barger got out of the army. He's a big military guy, really into the military. But those already Hells Angels existed when he came out. No, because no. he's saying 
Fon- who started Fontana and Bernardino? Right, I know. That's why I'm going to correct you guys because I, I like I've done like a lot of like reading on this, and so what actually had happened is originally the Hell's Angels were of um, were fighters, were air fighters. Yeah, well, we all know that, but I'm just saying that Hell's Angels had an existence on Bernardino before Oakland. Well, that's the that okay. So that's like because I know that Barger. Was in, was in charge of marketing the, the name and putting it out there when he did the movies. Right. But there was also, when that movie came out, there was a lot of Hells Angels coming out that were not Hells Angels. So that, yes, and that was corrected as well because they, they got the copyright on their, on their thing. But what happened is is that it was a small group that started in Oakland according to, to the club itself. And that they were riding up to go to a rally in Los Angeles. And at this point, nobody had heard of um, Hell's Angels or anything is this small group out of Oakland. They see some group of guys that are around, surrounded by a broken down motorcycle, and they roll up and they're like, "What's up? You guys need help?" And they're wearing the same death head patches, everything, and they're like, "You guys are Hell's Angels. We're Hell's Angels." And then right then and there, they decided to have a meeting and figure out and hash out, you know, who started it, who belonged to who, and then um, they got along pretty good, so it kind of worked out for them. And that, but what you guys are talking about is the whole like argument. Did it start over here or did it start over there? Sonny Barger, who is the last of the surviving like leaders, says that it started in Oakland, but it could have started in in San Bernardino, like it said. And Fontana. In Fontana, but nobody really knows because because the people that I know who live in that area. They're dead on that it started right there. They're not gonna they, let it go. Yeah, if you go to Oakland though, and go to the Oakland. Um, I, I used to live around the corner from the Oakland um, clubhouse. Those guys will fucking say dead on it started here. So and they, and they beef. Hell's Angels is a lot like Mexican Mafia or um, or like Nuestra Familia, where there's a lot of infighting. There's a lot of disagreements. There's a lot of like. So you're never gonna get your history straight out of these guys. Because it's different factions of the same gang that are like, no, we're the best. No, fuck you, we're the best. No, Southern California Angels are fucking. And they and it's funny because I used to hang out with a lot of MCs when I was before I did comedy, and you would hear them go, well, we don't fight like the like the eighty one does, you know. And eighty one is uh, is uh, also like AKA Hell's Angels. Eighth letter of the word H one A Hell's Angels. Anyway, so yeah, they would be like, "Oh, we don't fight like eighty one. Yeah, eighty one's always fucking fighting." I mean, there's that whole famous thing where the 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 leader of the Hell's Angels died in San Jose, and they buried him. And as there's thousands of people at this funeral, right? Damn. And the guy that allegedly was involved in the murder of that guy was there, and they found out, and they killed him in front of all those people. And fucking to this day, no one stepped forward to say who. who killed you know, that you guy. know what's crazy about that? Um, the whole um, the biker, the 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 bikey scene, as they say it in uh, Europe, the bikey scene. Um, the banditos. The banditos. Yeah, the banditos, bro. They're they're all everywhere, bro. Everywhere. Thailand. Right. Yeah. And um, so their colors are orange. And yellow, right? Yeah. Kind of like um, our my high school. Right. Yeah. I, I I went one time. I went in a rabbit hole on all these clubs to find out where are they at all over the world. And um, in Germany, yeah. Like if like the Mongols, for example, the Mongols are in Germany, but the Mongols did something that different, man. Like like if you go to Germany, and I thought the the. I thought like the biker gang would be like white, but no, bro, they're 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 um Lebanese. They're, they're the minorities of that country. They're the minority of that country. Which is which is what the Mongols' purpose was. Because yeah, because they're Lebanese, bro. They're people, because they look all like, these, dude. One time, I was in Montebello, California, and a bunch of Mongols came in, and they had all. I didn't know, man. Nomad, Oklahoma City. Right. And there was this one guy, bro, who looked. Like he was from fucking New Zealand, dog. Right. He had a hair. He had a hair like this, and another guy looked like he was wear. Like he could be a guy that wears a turban. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that, but I went to go look at Germany, and they looked like that. Yeah. So he was just hanging out, bro. Those, like the guys from New Zealand are Maori. Maori. Like, 
Mari or whatever. Yeah, they're Mari. But they got their own thing over there. They, they, they call the Black Family. Right. Those guys are fucking crazy, bro. Those guys run that whole thing out there. And that's the thing, so, man, is... The, the bandito, before I forget, man, right, I want to yeah, get yeah, lost. Yeah. There's a biker gang, look it up, Philip, in Germany called Los Chicanos. But they're the same color as the bandidos. And they're like an affiliation of, they're called Chicanos, right? Oh, we have those in San Jose. They're the same color as, um, but those, are, those guys were brown. Yeah. Red and yellow. Red and yellow. And they're an actual biker gang called Chicanos, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. All white dudes. I don't know what the, the colors are. I've seen them in San Jose. I think they're brown. That's the other thing, too, man. Is but like, that's a club club, huh? Yeah, that's a club. Do you think people they're like... They're a legit club. They're cool. They don't fucking do drugs and shit. Like, or they don't, like, run drugs and stuff. But I thought like you said earlier that they got to pay taxes to um, a bigger gang. If you're in a MC, you still have to pay up, yeah. I mean, everybody probably has a nefarious activity here and there, but it's just, it's more of, it's not even like. A so if you got, if you, so you could be a biker, because he, because uh, um, what I'm trying to tell you about the bikers here, they don't ride MC on their, on their club. Their right. jacket has no MC on it. They don't have MC next to that's it. That's what I'm telling you to tell you. Like, you probably say you can't believe it, but they don't have, they have, they don't have MC. Right. Like their jackets are not like biker jackets, right? But they could roll deep, bro. They're a club, right? They're a club, like um, like a club. They just happen to be writers. So we have those. Yeah, we have those. That's what I'm saying. Okay, like, yeah, we have. Totally they don't have. They're not like East LA bikers motorcycle club. Nah, they're not that. Right, right. They're called East LA bikers. That's it. Well, I just know. Okay, so my buddy was running a bar, and it was an underground bar in San Francisco. And he was running after hours uh, shows and bars and like serving after hours. Oh, so dude, they got taxed. And then the fucking big, the dude, the Hells Angels came downstairs and was like, hey, man, if you're running a fucking anything after hours illegally, making money illegally out here, you owe us money. And that's kind of how they roll around. Um, mythically, I don't want to, because now I'm going to get approached by people and they're going to be like, what, do you, what did you say? Uh, but I do know that. You know, supposedly, if let's say me and you want to start a motorcycle club with Philip and and Lisa, well, I have the perfect name, bro. What? I thought we could have a a, 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 a motorcycle club that only patrols the outside of Dodger Stadium during games. <laughs> yeah. And call it call it Chavez Ravine. Chavez Ravine. Because that's what the, that's what the neighborhood used to be called, oh, Chavez really? Ravine. Before they knocked when they knocked it down to make Dodger Stadium. Yeah. It was a real a neighborhood called Chavez Ravine. Dude, my girlfriend was so you bring it this. back, Dude. and the the fucking rocker on the front will be Dodger Stadium, and then on on top it'll just say Dodgers, right? And a bottom Chavez Ravine, and you just could patrol Elysian Park to fucking Sunset by by fucking Jack in the Box on Boylston. Right. That could be your hood, Ben. But you you gotta have season tickets because you gotta be at every game, making sure no giant fans got a hand. I can't be in that game because <laughs> I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> but here's the thing, though: if we're just doing that, a giant what? Hold on, pause. Not uh, <laughs> If we're doing that, is there anything illegal going on? Then, then we don't have to see, worry man. Because now we're talking about clubs, okay? Now right. we're, we're, this is the club, right? Right. When I went looking for um, coats, yeah, clubs, gangs, whatever, right? Right. Like, when did the coat stop being a gang? When did the gang become a uh, a mafia? When did the club, a club, become a nefarious entity? You know what I mean? Because there's clubs and there's coats, all right? Now, this is. This is like really, really like another, another, um, another, another culture, you know, like another culture, counter culture that we don't know about. There's a gang inside Disneyland, like a big ass gang, bro. There's a crew. There's crews, and they wear rockers. Yeah, there's different. There's different. Um, and there's like they're Disney gangs. Yeah. They're Disney gang. They yeah. they go to. And they're like they don't get along with each other, bro. Oh, they, they're, they they're being leave? told not to get along, not to wear that shit no more. Because if also if you go to Disneyland, I was in, I was in a Disney. If you go to Disneyland during um, <laughs> huh? Sons of Anakin. 
Really? Okay, so I was in a- So, dude, there <laughs> if you go to um if you go to Disneyland during Pride Month, you'll see them. There's a Pride Month, there's a gay gay not a gay there's a gay club who love Disney, bro. Right, yes. Who love Disney yes. and I seen the rocker. Do they fight? Do they get them up and fight? They put on big ass Mickey Mouse hands, bro, and they fuck each other up. <laughs> I get the fuck out of here. So, bro, they they have tattoos, bro. Yeah, on their stomach. Right. Big M A S A Matterhorn. I so when I was you, you fought, hold on, bro. You get along with the teacups. <laughs> no, bro. No, no, I don't. Fuck Are you from Tomorrowland, homie, or <laughs> or Futureland, dog? I went to Orlando, Florida for nine days to go to Disney World with my ex-girlfriend's family. And it was like 10 of us. And we started our own gang. Like we had jackets with the rockers and the fucking everything. I didn't know that we were doing that until right now when you said that. Man, it sounds like there's a fucking train station outside. Bro, it's crazy. A fucking electric car. And a plane passing it's by. It's raining right now. Where the fuck am I right now? Dude, it's raining. And I was it sounded like an electrical it. car from sucking <laughs> the fucking San, San Francisco tree outside. Lisa says that the, the microphone's kept picking up, but it's loud outside I'm glad right you guys now. can't hear what we hear, man. Yeah, because it's But loud. there's the, the war of Zion upstairs. <laughs> History for fools. Thank you for listening, Thanks man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the gang thing. Should we do another one, gang, or just do go straight to a... Um, Straight to uh, Christmas holidays. That's you got more to touch on?